You know what's great about living in America? We get to make choices, right? We're a television studio. These are usually around television studios. Not this one, but most of them. For energy, 20 minutes, bite into that, right? Couple donuts, 20 minutes energy. For sustained energy, and we're gonna talk about this today, millennials are turning to shots. Not the kind of shots you think, these kinds of shots. And there are risks. Look, I like the taste of this. I maybe don't like the taste of this. There are risks. And the older you get, the more severe the risks become. Welcome to Know the Cause. My name is Doug Kaufman. For the past 40 years, I've dedicated my life and even my career to finding the root cause of disease. Join me and a team of physicians, pharmacists, and scientists. And soon you too will know the cause. You know, we love being with our children, and now Berkeley, our grandson, and we took the kids and we went uh, to a few states. Uh, we flew in and absolutely had a ball, meeting the kids, their wives, and, and Berkeley. And folks, it's fascinating that kids today are so different. For example, bar hopping, a shot of this, got me high, right? When I got back from Vietnam, you know, 40 years ago, 45 years ago. Today, the new millennials, are doing this for a high. This is fresh squeezed juice, green apple, chlorophyll, spinach, etc. And it's so neat to watch that transition. While we were on vacation, I noticed a lizard that hopped onto a rock that was kind of a gray color. And within two minutes, the lizard became gray color. And then he hopped over on a dark rock and he became dark. And then on a red fence and he became red. He was a chameleon lizard, right? And I think we older Americans have got to become more like chameleons. This was cool in the 60s and 70s, right? This is yesterday, and thank God for our kids, they're witnessing the same thing. That's not so good. I don't feel so good. 20 minutes or so I get a buzz from this, but I don't feel so good. This, as my opening says, seems to sustain me for longer periods of time. This, mm, raw enzymes, organic food. Isn't it amazing what our kids are teaching us today? But we've got to be responsible. We have to be chameleons. We have to be willing to listen to our kids. A headline, health news, sober is the new drunk. Why millennials are ditching bar crawls for juice crawls. And they have this one crawl they mentioned. A fireball is not cinnamon whiskey that teenagers steal from their parents around Christmas. Rather, it's an orange-based drink with a spicy kick from a mix of cayenne, ginger, and oregano oil. I've had it. And it's a little tiny shot that you drink down. Whoo! Is it a nasal opener? Is it a brain opener? And it sustains you much longer than the 10 or 20 minutes we get from a sugar rush from eating this way. It's really, folks, are we willing to change? Are we willing to risk our lifestyle for a different lifestyle? Yeah, we've gotten 65, 70 years old, and we feel pretty good, and we made it that far. But are we willing to risk? Are we willing to listen to our kids and our grandkids that this is the new big thing? And look what it's doing for their health. They're living longer and stronger. They're healthy. They may not be running from doctor to doctor as we are doing currently. And this, I think, prevents that. So when we're talking about risk, we're talking about going out on a limb, and we're talking about risking feeling really good like these used to make us for something brand new that might sustain our health indefinitely. Watch this. So what motivates you to try a program like ours? You're young, 25, 26 years old, your weight is perfect. When there's little motivation, there's also little risk. So you can walk across this on the ground without any risk. Here I am, young, healthy, I can go to the doctor, go on antibiotics, drink a couple of beers, eat bread and, and corn and these things, and, and there's not a whole lot of motivation because there's not a whole lot of risk. I'm young, I'm invincible, I'm gonna go on forever. But what happens when you get 50 years old and arthritis sets in and you find yourself 75 pounds overweight? The motivation goes up, but so does the risk. Okay, so all those years of a beer here, a glass of wine there, I wasn't really worried, I was invincible. All of a sudden you're finding yourself overweight, arthritis, you know, a lot of these mycotoxins and these fungi, 
impose disease onto us, so the motivation is still there. You want to get to this end. You want to feel better. But right now you're relying on doctors and pills and medicines. What about the old self-motivated person you used to be? So of course my motivation is the same, but the risk is now much higher. You know, you could fall, you could injure yourself on this. Um, if I fell down, I'd hurt my ankle and then I'd have to go back to the doctor. So know that the motivation is always going to be there as you age. It's just the risk that gets higher and higher and higher. You were invincible back here, weren't you? There was no problem back when you were in your 20s and you said the same thing I said and everybody says. What's wrong with a beer? What's wrong with a couple rounds of antibiotics? What's wrong with a little popcorn? We were all invincible, but now you're 70, you're 65, 70, 75 years old, and the motivation is still there because you just exited the doctor's office and he said, you have cancer, or this heart condition is irreversible, or your hands and your legs are now gonna be crippled with some disease. You know what, you wanna go back to when you were 20, 25 years old walking the invincible plank, but you can't. You're still motivated, Doug, now I wanna try that diet. It's gonna be a little harder, but I'm willing to do it. Now I wanna start those supplements I see advertised on your show. You know what, the motivation is even higher now. But look what happened to the risk. Who's gonna walk across that plank? Someone who is totally motivated and who wished they would have at 25, 30, 40 years old, maybe not taken all of those drugs that the doctors prescribed, maybe not drunk all of that alcohol, or maybe checked grains in their diet. Don't worry, you'll still get there. Might just be a little harder now. I'm proud to be a seasoned senior citizen, but have you ever wondered what is aging? Aging is the sum total of life's negative events. So we've got to avoid those negative health events like illnesses and toxicity. How? By keeping our immune soldiers strong, aware, and numerous. Eat right, take your NSC Gold Multiple Vitamin, rest good, exercise moderately, and minimize stress. But your immune cells need fuel to perform immunity glucan to be specific. NSC 100 extra strength glucan and NSC 24 original glucan nutritionally arm your immune soldiers to respond with speed and power. The key to being healthy at any age is a potent immune response. Can you afford to wait? Aging want. NSC beta glucan, get it today. Hey, coming up in the show, I'm going to be talking about a mold called Aspergillus flavus that can wreck your health, and I think it does. But before that, I love Dr. Fred Pescatore. He is an absolute hoot to be with. He's now going to talk about these three words. My doctor says. Take it away, Fred. I'm often amazed by some of the stuff my patients tell me that their primary care physicians have told them. Not just bad advice, but often outright dangerous misinformation. This is really sad. In a recent survey conducted by the Council for Responsible Nutrition, it was concluded that more than half of supplement users rely on their doctors for information on what products to use and how to use them. I would say the average physician probably knows about vitamin D, and they may know about fish oil, but that's about it. Unless, of course, they have some 20-year-old producer telling them what to say on set that day and you know who you are. Unfortunately, most medical schools only give nutrition a passing mention, much less bother to teach about nutritional supplements. I've even heard from people whose closed-minded doctors told them, you can't be pa my patient if you continue to use nutritional supplements. Honestly, I don't know what kind of open dialogue you can have with any physician who is this ignorant of nutritional medicine. But unfortunately, they're all over the place, and I bet some of you even go to them. And this, my friends, is a very dangerous situation because supplements are active substances, and they can interact with prescription medications, and they are powerful and safe health promoters. Find yourself a good nutritionist or physician knowledgeable in this area or one who isn't afraid of doing some research with you. I'm Dr. Fred Pescatore for Know the Cause. To continue our education, let's do a little bit on fungus, and I'm going to be a little bit technical here because you have to be. So those of you who are looking for the phylum or the species or the genus, you're not going to get that, you mycologists out there. But those of us in the audience who really want to learn about a fungus we're being exposed to commonly, let's start moving out.
aspergillus, it's called. A plant, animal, and human disease causing uh, fungus. Uh, this is interesting, it's called a pathogen. It can cause human disease. It has two characteristics. One is saprophytic, right? It eats dead or decaying vegetation, which by the way, one day you and I will be dead or decaying, and it's these fungi that will decompose our body. Second, it's parasitic. That means if we give it enough food, it's gonna stay inside our bodies. Aspergillus fungus causes disease on many grain crops. We've talked about this on the show, especially corn, but other grains, wheat. I, I, I can't believe Americans, everybody thinks they're gluten intolerant because they're going off wheat and they're feeling much better. Would it be the little gluten fraction or is it the aspergillus growing on the wheat that you're going off of that makes you feel better? When we eat those foods, it can make them toxic and cancer causing by making a poison, a mycotoxin called aflatoxin. This is a carcinogenic uh, toxin. It causes uh, aspergillosis infections of the lungs and the sinuses. Aspergillomas are fungal balls that invade the lungs or other human cavities and they mimic cancer. There are three common species. Now, I want you to understand I'm not showing you how much knowledge I have. This is important information so you can differentiate and tell your doctor, hey, I think it might be Aspergillus fumigatus. Okay, here we go. Let's start with that one. Aspergillus fumigatus, most common form of invasive fungus, aspergillosis. It can disseminate through the bloodstream. So you scratch yourself out gardening and boom, into the bloodstream it goes. Makes the mycotoxins aflatoxin, cancer-causing, and gliotoxin, which interrupt the function of our white blood cells. A very dangerous fungus linked to many health problems. Typically it lives in the soil and in moldy buildings where it's inhaled. Okay, that's fumigatus. Let's go to another one. Let's go to flavus, aspergillus flavus found in stored grains. There's your wheat and corn and barley and oats and so forth. Can invade arteries, your eyes, your sinuses, your lungs or your brain, causing tissue death, infarction, uh, tissue death. It produces the genotoxic, does that mean it wrecks our DNA? Yep. Carcinogen, does that mean it causes cancer? Yep. And it's called aflatoxin and aspergillus makes this aflatoxin. It can cause hepatitis, liver cancer and immune system suppression. It's, it's like amazing, right? Here's the sad thing, not many doctors know this. You don't graduate from medical school knowing this. If you listen to your patients, you can sometimes pick this up. The next one is Aspergillus flavus was the most, uh, flavus was the most prevalent Aspergillus species to be recovered, are you ready for this? In hospital wards and in homes. Okay, you spend much time in a hospital, you may be breathing this, right? If you work in a hospital, et cetera. But what about your home? And finally, Aspergillus niger. It's used in the production of high fructose corn sweeteners and citric acid uh, used in making sodas. But look at this, it's associated with tinnitus, hearing loss, hair loss, skin conditions, abdominal pain, vomiting, and acid reflux, okay? Now, do you suffer from any of those? Are you drinking soda pops or eating a lot of grains, pastas, cereals, etc.? Folks, we get back in this short break, I'm gonna tell you how we're exposed to it and then what I would do if I was having a lot of these symptoms we just talked about, how I would talk to my doctor. Don't go away. Hi, I'm Susie Cohen and I'm excited to introduce a revolutionary new formula from the company who brought us award-winning Dr. O'Hara's probiotics. It's called Rejactive. Rejactive formulas are proven to generate and maintain glutathione, your master antioxidant that's responsible for cell regeneration and overall good health. Experience excellent health with revolutionary, remarkable Rejactive. Your brain is an amazing thing, but as you get older, it naturally begins to change, causing a lack of sharpness or even trouble with recall. Thankfully, the breakthrough in Prevagen helps your brain and actually improves memory. The secret is an ingredient originally discovered in jellyfish. In clinical trials, Prevagen has been shown to improve short-term memory. Prevagen, the name to remember. And welcome back, friends. Now, let's continue talking about aspergillus because you and I are being exposed to it. Indoor air, have you visited anyone in a hospital recently? Have you eaten grains, corn, popcorn, etc.? We are exposed to this all the time. Instead of going forward, let me just back up one. And let's go over these symptoms again, right? Associated 
This aspergillus niger is associated with tinnitus, hearing loss, hair loss, skin conditions, abdominal pain, vomiting, or acid reflux. You think any Americans have these problems? You think any doctor says, are you drinking soda? Because aspergillus is used to make high fructose corn sweeteners. Nothing against them, folks. They didn't learn this in medical school. This is kind of a brand new understanding. As a matter of fact, I remember visiting a couple of medical schools through the years, and they're all sitting there with soda pops, drinking them, you know, between classes. So understand this isn't well known, but now you know it. That's the important thing. If you have ringing in the ears, hearing loss, hair loss, skin conditions, abdominal pain, we all do. Acid reflux, think about the soda pop. Now, let's go forward and go to this. Exposure, how are we being exposed to this stuff? Did you eat cereal this morning? Did you have a bagel? Are you eating pancakes? Cereal and other grains, especially corn. Did you go to the movie last weekend? And did you have a box of popcorn? High fructose corn sweeteners, soda pop. And you're, many of you are saying to your doctor, well, I might drink two or three a week. This stuff stays in your body, right? Remember, it spreads via the bloodstream. So just put it in, let it grow, feed it, and it's going to grow on you. Soil. Have you been sick since you started gardening outside? Did you dig a trench for your sprinkler system? Did you build your own fence? Are you using one of those tractors to stir up dirt? And you don't understand why you can't breathe well or you're having health problems? You may be exposed to this aspergillus, which is in the sand, it's in the soil, right? Buildings, homes that have leaked and are now moldy including but not limited to hospitals, right? And to medical buildings, and to churches, and to libraries. So it's not just a home, as Chris Chase, the pioneer guy, teaches us all the time. It's that we have sealed up these buildings, and then we go indoors. Don't, shh, don't let a little bit of that nice, cool air leak outside where it's 100 degrees. Lock your home up and then live in it. Mm, boy, we have to start rethinking that. If you suspect aspergillus poisoning, and it is poisoning, Number one, folks, go to a doctor. Go to a doctor you trust. Maybe go to a health food store and say, is there a doctor who understands yeast and mold and, and these kinds of chemicals? Uh, maybe I want to make an appointment with him. Uh, then ask the doctor if you can try some bloodstream antifungals, Diflucan, Spornox, Lamisil, Voriconazole. There are several of them that are relatively safe. The older generations, right, the older generation ones like, like uh, Nizerol and Amphotericin B, they were pretty tough on the liver. I don't think the new ones are. Ask your doctor for a month if you could take a Diflucan every day, right, and see what would happen. Number two, stop eating foods that are feeding fungus. Fungus must have carbs to survive. So start our phase one diet, juice with green juices, uh, spinach, kale, etc. Natural antifungals, gosh, we talked about life extension today. You think in that bottle of two a day there are some natural antifungals in there? My guess would be there would be, folks. Uh, vitamin C, I'll never forget meeting one of the authors of vitamin C, and he taught me that that it does have antimicrobial properties. Time. This can take many months to heal. Don't be in a hurry. Do sweat outside. Do use far infrared saunas. Do put chlorophyll in your water. And do try and make it through this. It's bad, but you can get better with a good doctor's help. Don't go away. I'll be right back to wrap it up. Hi, I'm Jenny Herbacek with The Cancer Connection. Our bodies can make around 10,000 cancer cells a day, but if our immune system is strong, it sweeps them up at night and throws them away. The immune system uses melatonin, the sleep hormone in that process. That's why melatonin is also called the anti-cancer hormone. Melatonin production peaks around 3 a.m. So to maximize your melatonin production, sleep in a dark room because when your eyes sense the light, your body stops making this valuable hormone. For Know the Cause, I'm Jenny Herbacek. I think for those people who are very active and don't like to take a lot of pills, uh, the two a day would be perfect for them. This is a multivitamin formula based on the ideal intake of all these wonderful vitamins and minerals that are gonna optimize your health way more than a generic multivitamin will. Take one in the morning, one in the evening, boom, they're done, and it covers you know, a multitude of different uh, things that will help you stay healthy. Order now for the two per day vitamin, a 60 day supply for $11. There's such a huge arena that candida overgrowth affects. 
Everything from digestive disorders, acid reflux, to depression, anxiety, fear, foggy head, hormones, low hormones, allergies. If you've got food allergies, if you have allergies, you've got candida overgrowth. It's just a fundamental issue behind all these. And I took what I learned about health and nutrition and tried to make as many good products as I possibly could. Time for me now to whet your appetite. How does cinnamon almond butter cookie sound? That's good? How about this? It's on the phase one diet. Watch Lindsay. The first one we're gonna start with is a phase one cinnamon almond butter cookie. I'm adding in one stick of softened room temperature butter and a half a cup of xylitol. When it comes to the sweetener, you can use stevia and you can also use as much as you like. Um, do it to taste. We're gonna go ahead and cream the butter and the sugar or xylitol together first until it's light and smooth and kind of whipped up. I like to do it for about 10 minutes. The key to a really soft cookie is really creaming that butter and sugar. Okay, our butter and xylitol is all creamed together. Look at how nice and creamy and smooth and light this is. If you'll give your butter and xylitol the time to actually cream up like that, that was 10 minutes on medium high speed, you will notice such a difference in your cookies. Okay, now we're gonna add in one quarter teaspoon of sea salt. This is one and one quarter teaspoons of vanilla extract. This is one half teaspoon of cinnamon, one half teaspoon of cardamom, that's a really delicious spice. We have one quarter cup of blanched almonds, all chopped up, and this is one and one quarter cups of almond flour. Dump it right in. Okay, we're gonna turn our mixer on medium to medium high and get our cookie dough working. It's gonna take just a minute to blend all together. And if you don't have a standard kitchen mixer, you could use a hand mixer, an electric mixer, and it would work just fine as well. Okay, that should do it. Take our spatula, get it on the bowl. Okay, go ahead and get the sides all clean there. Okay, I'm gonna pull out a sheet of wax paper and put my cookie dough down, almost just right in the center of it. Just plop it on there. Okay, now we're gonna take our wax paper and start to roll this into a log. It's not gonna be perfect, however you kinda like to roll it out and get it into, you know, about a one inch diameter. Will work. And we're going to do it this way because we're going to let it chill overnight in the refrigerator to let it firm up for a little bit. We've got a nice tight roll there. And we're going to get about 12 cookies out of this, 12 to 15. So there we go. I can definitely get 12 to 15 cookies out of this size log. Okay, we're all set. I'm just gonna twist up the ends. Make sure air doesn't get in to dry out my dough overnight. And then we're gonna put this in the refrigerator. And this, guys, is your finished product. This is our cinnamon almond butter cookies. Wow, isn't that sweet and delicious? I love it. The butter and the cinnamon all comes through and a little bite from those blanched almonds we put in there. Which of my books fits you? My newest book is called Your Fungal Questions Answered. 
It's a compendium of hundreds of questions that have been asked me through the years, many of those questions like you have. And yes, the book is complete with information on the diets and the antifungals that are often recommended. Hello? Susan, where have you been? I've missed you. I've told you. I don't know what to do. It's been almost four days. You know this isn't healthy for our relationship. I'm so lonely, so lonely. I'm so lonely, I can die. I'm so lonely, so lonely. So lonely, I can die. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to wake up and feel amazing every single day? Well, it's possible. And not only is it possible, but it is, it is something that's probable if you do these few simple exercises. So today we're gonna do what's called a side plank. We're gonna go ahead and get on the ground here. All right. Now, if you're new at this and you haven't been working out or exercising for long, it doesn't matter. Today is gonna be the best day of your life. Knees together, hips pushed forward, and I'm pushing off my right elbow. Now all I want to do is take my left hand into my hip and I'm going to raise my hips to the sky. This is all about posture. I want to keep my shoulder blades low. I want to keep my shoulder blades together and I just want to lift my hips to the sky. If you're feeling a little stronger, kick your feet out. Now, this is the, this is the next step, the next progression here. Again, drive into my elbow, lift. Oh yeah, nice side plank. Now the point of this exercise is to keep my posture perfect. Shoulder blades low, shoulder blades together, and pinch an imaginary credit card, American Express Black, between your buns. You don't want to drop that, it's a powerful one. Perfect posture makes sure that your body, your kinetic chain is in the perfect balance. By doing these simple exercises every single morning, I would encourage you to do that every single morning, you'll dramatically change your life. Did you know that endorphin means inner morphine, and exercise produces endorphins. Who didn't want a feeling of, it, of morphine flowing through your body every morning? You're gonna feel great. Your future's in your hands. I encourage you to really wake up, make this the first part of your day, and try this. Thanks for checking us out, know the cost. You know, we were talking one time, we actually love what we learn bringing this show to you. So whether it's shots that the millennials are taking, not this kind, this kind of shot, uh, or whether it's walking the plank, you know, risking it all and going out there, this is the show to watch. I thought it was fascinating with Dr. Fred Pescatori talking about his peers, how he wishes they knew about nutrition. When someone tells me my doctor says, it almost goes right over my head, unless I hear my doctor knows fungus and my doctor knows nutrition. Speaking about fungus, what do you think of this aspergillus mold? It's an ugly thing, folks, and it can really wreak havoc on your health. That's the good news, you now know this. The bad news is, so few of our doctors do know it, okay? Stay tuned, tell your friends about Know the Cause, watch it again at knowthecause.com. See you next time, bye-bye.